Fortnite squad. There is a huge problem in the United Kingdom with discrimination against minorities. The most oppressed group? You guessed it, us gamers. Last week, Meghan Markle's husband, Prince Harry, fired a shot across the bow, a warning shot at Gamer Nation. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, more like Chad and Veronica, am I right gamers? The British prince, most notable for marrying a middle-aged American divorcee and being ginger, went to the media with his hot take. Fortnite and similar games should be banned. In his talk, which he gave at a YMCA, he stated that Fortnite and similar games are too addictive, a waste of time, and should not be allowed in the UK. Video games and social media are highly addicting and can negatively impact young children's brain development when they are allowed to play and use social media unsupervised, he argues. This statement, as you may predict, caused a huge amount of online controversy. People took to Twitter to mock Prince Harry, much in the same way people mocked those pushing video game censorship in the early 2000s post-Columbine. Lol, you're just mad because you suck at fork knife. What's wrong, bro? Lose to an eight-year-old? Some people doubled down, insisting there is nothing wrong with children playing video games, and Prince Harry is simply pushing outdated notions because he's a 35-year-old boomer sip, that doesn't understand technology. Here's the problem. Prince Harry isn't actually fundamentally wrong. Three, two, one. Okay, put your thumbs down. I see you out there, gamers, already typing up those comments like, James is an idiot that thinks video games are dangerous, or there goes James again taking an edgy position just for the sake of being edgy, unsubbed. Actually, you're wrong. There is a wealth of research now emerging suggesting that social media and video games do have an effect on the brain development, chemistry, and attention span of young children. We'll review that research in today's video. Prince Harry is not wrong to be concerned about a generation of barely literate kids with zero attention spans whose brains have been wired to feed on dopamine hits from flashing lights and happy sounds on the iPhones their deadbeat parents let them play with at 8 months old. At the same time, Harry's proposition that Fortnite and similar games be restricted or banned is simply a non-starter in the current year of the United Kingdom. The notion that children should be outside playing with friends, going to parks, playing sports, or going over to their friends' houses, I support that 100%. Playing in real life is objectively better for children than playing over the internet. In an ideal world, that sounds great. The world we live in, though, is not ideal. It's covered in white face paint and strap on red noses and dons a rainbow colored wig. The world of children playing safely outside or walking down to the corner store to get a snack and go play some soccer or football in the park is a relic of the Europe of the past. The United Kingdom is a more dangerous place than it has been in over half a century. The country is undergoing a demographic transformation that is making the British people increasingly ostracized and unsafe in their own home country. Why would you send your kid outside to play if there's a disturbingly high chance the next time you'll see him, it will be with a black eye, broken ribs, or even worse. Hooking children up to iPhones and video games from a young age is objectively bad for their mental and emotional health. But as a parent myself, I understand it. I understand why parents feel good having their children in their rooms, where they know they're physically safe. And I understand why guys in my age group are drawn to video gaming as an escape from the modern world. In today's video, we will explore this very fraught, contentious debate. As always, let me know in the comments what you think. And we'll jump right into that, but first, your chance to own a piece of American history. Back at the turn of the century, the Morgan Silver Dollar was the way everything was paid for. For over 25 years, this coin was the $10 bill of its day. This coin I'm holding right here was minted in 1884. It likely changed hands hundreds, if not thousands of times in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. These are pieces of American history, and right now, you have the opportunity to get your hands on one just like this. Now you can choose from a carefully selected range of turn-of-the-century coins for every budget and level of interest, from beginner to seasoned expert. Go to HistoricSilverCoins.com and use the code JAMES for a discount of $5 off per coin while supplies last. HistoricSilverCoins.com we have to begin this conversation not with the Twitter pissing match between Gamer Nation and Blue Check journalists and the royal family, but with an understanding of facts. In September 2018, the World Health Organization began monitoring what they call gaming disorder. Yes, I know. We all have the urge to mock things like this as part of the generational divide between boomers and millennials. I get it. But let's be honest. Odds are you know someone that spends an unhealthy amount of time parked in front of the PC or if they're a pleb, the console, playing video games to the point where it is an addiction. The WHO, not the band, the organization, classifies gaming disorder as, quote, 
a pattern of gaming behavior, digital gaming or video gaming, characterized by impaired control over gaming, increasing priority given to gaming over other activities to the extent that gaming takes precedence over other interests and daily activities, and continuation or escalation of gaming despite the occurrence of negative consequences. For gaming disorder to be diagnosed, the behavior pattern must be of sufficient severity to result in significant impairment in personal, family, social, educational, occupational, or other important areas of functioning and would normally have been evident for at least 12 months. They're not saying that because you play a couple hours a week or even a couple hours a day that you have a disorder. They're talking specifically about a severe state, an addiction that impairs people's ability to function and causes problems in personal, educational, or work lives. That's on the extreme end, of course, but there's also emerging research showing that children who play a lot of video games have lower attention spans and a harder time focusing in school. An Iowa State University published in 2018 analyzed 1,323 elementary school students and an additional 210 college students. The lead researcher said the following, quote, it is still not clear why screen media may increase attention problems, but many researchers speculate that it may be due to rapid pacing or the natural attention-grabbing aspects that television and video games use. Another researcher reports that the pace of television programming has been quickened by the, quote, MTV effect. When MTV first came on, it started showing music videos that had very quick edits, cuts every second or two, Gentile said. Consequently, the pacing of other television and films sped up too, with much quicker edits. The quicker pace may have some brain-changing effects when it comes to attention span. Quote, brain science demonstrates that the brain becomes what the brain does, Gentile said. If we train the brain to require constant stimulation and constant flickering lights, changes in sound and camera angle, or immediate feedback, such as video games can provide, then when the child lands in a classroom where the teacher doesn't have a million dollar per episode budget, it may be hard to get children to sustain their attention. The study showed that the effect was similar in magnitude between video games and TV viewing." End quote. You see that principle borne out in today's media and entertainment as well. Look at companies that specialize in viral videos on social media. Our friends at Now This, for example. Their videos have cuts every few seconds to keep you paying attention. Many YouTubers use frequent jump cuts, and Vine exploded in popularity featuring the seven-second video. You can tell that attention spans are getting shorter, and it seems that social media is an additional driving force. A study published in 2006 in the Annals of General Psychology found that young boys who play video games at a higher rate are more likely to exhibit symptoms of Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, or ADHD. A 2012 APA study of over 3,000 children found, quote, consistent with previous research, those who spend more time playing video games subsequently have more attention problems, even when earlier attention problems, sex, age, race, and socioeconomic status are statistically controlled. Violent content may have a unique effect on attention problems and impulsiveness, but total time spent with video games appears to be a more consistent predictor. Individuals who are more impulsive or have more attention problems subsequently spend more time playing video games, even when initial video game playing is statistically controlled, suggesting bidirectional causality between video game playing and attention problems and impulsiveness. In other words, the problems make each other worse. Also, this isn't out-of-touch parent paranoia about ma-violent video games causing problems. The research has consistently shown that children that play more video games become more impulsive and have a harder time paying attention, regardless of the content of said games. And we're just beginning to see the implications of this as Gen Z starts to come of age. This isn't even taking into account the impact on children's ability to socialize with one another. Socializing over VOIP is not the same as spending time together in real life. Communication is different, manners are different, social cues are different, it's an entirely different animal. It's no coincidence that tech billionaires like Steve Jobs and Bill Gates chose to raise their children with very limited access to technology. From The Independent, quote, Psychologists are quickly learning how dangerous smartphones can be for teenage brains. Research has found that an 8th grader's risk for depression jumps 27% when he or she frequently uses social media. Kids who use their phones for at least 3 hours a day are much more likely to be suicidal. And recent research has found that teen suicide rate in the US now eclipses the homicide rate, with smartphones as the driving force." End quote. I've linked every study down below in the description, so before banging out a comment about how I'm an out-of-touch boomer or something, I would recommend you read them. This is something that I've noticed myself. My frequent use of social media over over the past couple of years has changed the way I read, and it's harder for me to pick up a book and read now than it ever was before. I'm certain that some of you have had the same experience or seen the same thing in your own life. 
Our brains are highly malleable, and instant gratification, dopamine surging, bite-sized information social media like Twitter, Facebook, Instagram is rewiring, so to speak, how our brains work. Let's revisit Prince Harry's initial statement. The game Fortnite shouldn't be allowed. Where is the benefit of having it in your household? It's created to addict, an addiction to keep you in front of a computer as long as possible. It's so irresponsible. Parents have got their hands up. They don't know what to do about it. It's like waiting for the damage to be done. Okay, I'm not a libertarian. I don't have a slavish devotion to securing the existence of the free market. I believe that the state should be allowed to regulate some behaviors for the sake of protecting people and the common good. And unless you believe that children should be allowed to buy meth and be sent to work in a coal mine, you agree with me. I'm open to the idea of government regulation to prevent children from succumbing to smartphone addiction at a young age. I think there should be age minimums on social media platforms, and parents that allow kids to have social media at a very young age are highly irresponsible. Here's the problem with Prince Harry's proposed Fortnite ban, though. What else are kids going to do? In the past, that would be an easy answer. Go down to the park and play football, or soccer, with the neighborhood kids. Walk over to your friend's house and hang out. Play street hockey, go mess around in the woods, the opportunities really were endless. Fast forward to now. What's a kid in the UK, or even the United States, going to do when he gets home from school? Go down to the park? Why? So he can be harassed by a group of migrants, or stabbed and mugged? So he can be bullied and beat up for being the only white kid? So he can become another statistic in London's record at knife crime problem? Go over to a friend's house? Well, British birth rates are at record lows, and have been falling for decades. Who are you going to go play with? In the same way that lazy parents hand their toddler an iPhone playing YouTube videos as a digital pacifier, baby shark, doo -doo 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 -doo, parents of older children are seeing video games as something that their kids can do where at least they'll be safe. They'll be home, in the house, quiet, out of harm's way. Likewise, I know plenty of people in my age group seeking digital refuge from the modern world. Their job sucks. They have no economic mobility. They have zero chance of living a life better than their parents did. Leisure activities are expensive and inconvenient. They're beginning to feel like a hated minority in their own country, but at least video games, at least anime, offers an escape from the hell that is clown world. Prince Harry, what do you propose British youths do instead of play Fortnite? Walk down the streets of London and become yet another victim of a migrant knife attack? Get bullied and beaten by foreigners? Why would any child or parent want that when Fortnite is a free download away? Video games have become a form of escapism, an escape valve, a way to keep ourselves busy and entertained as the world burns around us. We're safe and comfortable, or pacified, depending on your vantage point. ADHD symptoms and functional illiteracy are a price parents are willing to pay to keep their children at home, safe from the dangers of IV drugs and weaponized diversity. The West needs to have a conversation about freeing young people from their addictions to technology. Western leaders need to help get young people re-socialized and reintegrated with society. But first, they need to give young people a society that has a place for them.